boys and girls, it's Miss Carol, and I wanted to start reading stories to you again. I hope you're all doing well, and it's 2021, so I haven't read stories for a few weeks, so I hope you'll tune in and every week listen to the stories that I record. Today's story is called Loaves and Fishes, and it's written and illustrated by Helen Caswell. And I'll show you the pages as we go along. Thomas was going fishing. Although he was a little boy, his mother let him go off fishing by himself because he was always careful and he almost always brought back some fish for their supper. She wrapped up five little barley loaves for his lunch and waved to him as he went off whistling. Five barley loaves. Can you hold up your hand how many five is? One, two, three, four, five. Five barley loads. Very good. There's the picture. There he is. There's his mom waving. And there's Thomas. He's walking off to his favorite fishing place. Have you ever gone fishing, boys and girls? I haven't gone in a long time. I used to go when I was a little girl with my dad. Um, and I don't remember if I ever caught fish or not, but I like going because I just like being with my dad when we went fishing. And I hope that some of you have gone fishing too. It's always fun to be with someone when you're fishing. Sometimes you have to be quiet though so you don't scare the fish away. And I think that was the problem I had when I was little. I had a hard time not talking while we were in the boat. But I do like to fish. And you could fish from shore too, just like Thomas is doing. Thomas had a favorite fishing hole that only he knew about. The water was very safe and shallow, except for one place that was a bit deeper, where the fish liked to come. It was a very, it was very quiet and peaceful, which was one reason it was such a good fishing place. The fish didn't come close to the shore if there were lots of people and noise. He sat patiently holding his fishing pole for quite a long time. Finally, he felt the pole jerk, and there was a fish. Then he caught another one. He felt so lucky. He decided he would cook the two fish for his lunch. They would taste good with his barley loaves. And he would catch more later to take home to his mother. So there he is, sitting on the shore, catching some fish. Oh, he got two of them. Thomas carefully started a little fire on the beach and put his fish on a willow stick to cook. They were just getting brown and smelled wonderful when Thomas heard the sound of voices. Far down the shore was a crowd of people hurrying toward him. Thomas could hardly believe it. Nobody ever came to this lo lonely spot. Why now? And why so many? As they came closer, he heard what they were shouting. There he comes. See the boat? But we knew where he was headed and we got here first. Oh, look at all the people. See, here's all the people coming down. And there's Thomas cooking his fish. He just started cooking his fish. Then Thomas looked out across the water and saw the boat with some men in it, coming close to the shore. He recognized one of the men. His name was Jesus. And everyone was talking about him because he had cured many sick people. Wherever Jesus went, crowds followed him. He looked very tired, and Thomas thought he knew why Jesus had come to this lonely spot. He wanted some peace and quiet. But the crowd had followed him, and there would be no peace and quiet now. The fish would all be frightened away, too. Oh, Thomas was disgusted. He wouldn't be able to catch any more fish for his mother. Well, he'd just take her the two he had cooked for his lunch. Quickly, he wrapped them up with the barley loaves. So here's the boat coming in, okay? And Jesus is on that boat, and there's the fish and loaves of bread that he's going to wrap up and, and take home to his mom. Jesus came, Jesus and his friends got out of the boat and greeted the noisy crowd on the beach. Jesus' friends were called disciples. Thomas remembered that they looked cross, seeing the thousands of people. But Jesus smiled and began to talk to the people, answering their questions, telling them stories, and making them feel better. 
Thomas could hardly take his eyes off Jesus' face. So kind and loving, even though Thomas knew Jesus was so tired and really wanted to be alone for a little while. There's all the people on the shore and Thomas, and there's Jesus. See, he's smiling. Yeah. Before he knew it, the sky was turning a purplish color, and Thomas realized that it was almost supper time. How fast the time had gone. One of the disciples said, This is a lonely place, and the time has slipped by, so send the people away, and they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. And Jesus said, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. Oh boy. Jesus is telling them, We're, you're going to feed them. Don't send them away. Oh. The disciples looked at one another wide-eyed. Thomas saw that they had no food to give the people, and before he even thought about it, he unwrapped his five little barley loaves and the two fish and said, Here, you can have these. Oh, the men began to laugh. Then Thomas looked at the crowd of thousands of people, and he turned red with embarrassment. How silly he'd been. His little loaves and fishes wouldn't even start to feed so many people. But how nice of him to offer his fish and bread, right? His loaves of barley. Jesus is smiling. But Jesus thanked him, smiling solemnly. He took the five little loaves and the two little fishes, and holding them in his hands, he looked up to heaven and said the blessing. Then, while Thomas's eyes got bigger and bigger, Jesus began breaking the loaves and fishes into pieces and handing the pieces to his disciples to give to the crowd of people. Oh, the men had stopped laughing. Nobody was laughing as the thousands of people sat down in rows in the tall grass and the disciples handed out the food. Look at all the people, boys and girls. Yes, see them all? Wow. And there's Jesus breaking. Oh, there he is. He's got the bread. He's got the fish and the bread, and he's going to start breaking it into pieces. That's our next picture. Thomas watched Jesus' hands as they kept breaking off pieces of the loaves and the fishes, enough pieces to feed the thousands of people that they, all, that they all could eat. And Thomas's little loaves and the two little fishes never got any smaller. At last, Jesus said to his disciples, pick up the pieces left over so that nothing gets wasted. The disciples gathered up all that was left and filled 12 baskets with the scraps. Thomas wrapped up as much as he could to take home to his mother. See, there's, there, there's Jesus. And they're breaking up the bread, the five little loaves, and the two fishes. And they just keep breaking it up into pieces to hand out to everybody. And things never got smaller. Jesus kept... It was a miracle, right? That, um, see, Jesus can do miracles. He fed everyone with those five loaves of bread and two fish. Oh, Thomas had been so amazed, and he had <clears throat> he was he had been too amazed to eat. <laughs> but now at last he ate his two fish and some of the little loaves. He didn't know if they were the same fish he'd caught and the same loaves his mother had given him or what. It was confusing if you thought about it. But they tasted good, and he was hungry. He looked up at Jesus and Jesus smiled at him, and Thomas smiled back. There's Thomas, and there's Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful picture. Thomas and Jesus, both smiling at one another. Then, before the crowd noticed, Jesus walked away quietly into the hills. People started crying out, Where's Jesus? Where did he go? Oh, and there's Thomas. He's going like this with his hand on his head to see where Jesus is going. Let's see. Thomas didn't tell them 
Jesus deserved a little peace and quiet. He knew where he was going. He wanted a little peace and quiet. He was tired. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this story. I love the story about the loaves and the fishes. It's just one of the wonderful miracles that Jesus performs. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our story today. I'll be back next week with another one. And what do I always say to you? Jesus, Jesus is with you every day. God loves you every second, every minute, every hour of every day. And I hope that you'll find time each week to listen to our stories and open up your little Bibles that you have at home. And I'm really praying that we'll all be back in Sunday school really soon together because I love being with you and I miss you all. So have a wonderful week. I will see you next week. And as, all, as I always say to you, blessings to you all until we meet again. Bye-bye.